Today I'm going to be installing the manifold and the turbocharger on Broken Boosted and I'm also going to be showing you how to hook up your oil feed, oil return, and water lines. Before I get into this highly anticipated video, two things. Number one, I know y'all are subscribed to TJ Hunt's channel, okay? But just in case you missed it, I'm gonna link right here. He did a review on my car. It came out super awesome. Check that out. Don't forget to subscribe to TJ's channel. The other thing is, I have another channel that's a personal channel called Greg Peters. I'm gonna link that below also. And basically what I've been doing is uploading little videos called Boost Vlogs. They're more casual, less edited videos. Stuff that I do to my cars on the side that I don't really have time to do a full video production for, but I think still includes some useful information. So check out those I have three uploaded right now if you want to give them a quick watch let me know what you think let's quit chatting and get into it go ahead and remove your AFM your air box and your crossover tube just to generate some more space there's just a couple 12 millimeter bolts and a hose clamp to get this thing out of here remove just the exhaust manifold here you have a bunch of 14 millimeter nuts and then you have three nuts down at the bottom of the stock header that you have to remove and the O2 sensor as well. You can see the other three nuts on that flange down there. You can actually get to them through the wheel well from underneath the car. There they are again. And I already have the bolt loosened down there, but that's an exhaust clamp that'll let the rest of the exhaust system kind of hang down and allow you to get the stock manifold off. I bought a Victor Ryan's multi-layer exhaust manifold gasket because the one that came with the manifold is pretty much made out of recycled Coke cans. The manifold is probably made out of recycled Coke cans too, but we'll find out. And now the moment everyone has been waiting for, the part where the setup doesn't fit because the wastegate's in the way. And now the moment everyone has been waiting for, ta-da! All right, we're boosted, that's a wrap. So the turbo was kind of on there, and for starters, I'm gonna have to reclock the compressor housing and the CHRA because the feed is all the way over here. We need it to be directly vertical, and I think I can do it on the car. You just have to loosen up these bolts, and there's a big C-clip inside this compressor housing that you just have to kind of loosen up and you can fidget it around. Uh, check out my turbo rebuild video if you want to see how to actually loosen those things. Now that the turbo is mounted, we have to hook some things up to it. First thing I'm gonna do is the oil feed. In order to do that, you need an oil line that's capable of holding high pressure, preferably a stainless steel braided. A way to hook that line up to your turbo and a way to hook that line up to your block. Now the oil feed is one thing that the 1.6 and 1.8 differ from each other on because the 1.6s actually have a high pressure feed right on the side of the block that you can tap into, where the 1.8s you have to get a little more creative. A lot of people just run an oil filter sandwich or tee off of the oil pressure sensor. So the line I have is just a stainless braided with an AN4 fitting on either side. I have a one millimeter or 40 thousandths restrictor for the turbo. And the block fitting is M10 by 1.5 on one side and AN4 on the other side. On the 1.6, down by the bottom of the dipstick tube, there are two bolts. The one on the bottom right, closest to the transmission, is the high pressure oil feed, so you'll remove that bolt. The one you remove will look like this, and you'll replace it with the new one. Don't forget, you do need a copper washer on this for it to seal properly. Your restrictor, which mind you, the size could be different for different turbos. I run this size restrictor, 40 thousandths, one millimeter on both the China Turbo and the Garrett on my other car, and it seems to work. So that'll go right into your turbo. Typically the restrictor side faces up. And then just hook the line up to the turbo and to the block. Next up is the oil drain. You need a way to get the oil out of the turbo. These things right here, just search on eBay, T25 oil drain, T3 oil drain, TDO4, whatever you got, you'll get a bunch of results like this. This is just for hooking up a rubber hose to. And then as far as going to the oil pan, I already have that all set up. That was in the how to drill your oil pan video. Very simple fitting that just threads in. It's got the same size uh, nub on it there. It's gonna take a, a rubber hose and a couple hose clamps and we'll be done. Once the drain is installed, and your pan's got the same size fitting on it. Just connect the two with a rubber hose and some hose clamps. You can see our oil line dropping down into the abyss and hooking right up to the oil pan. For the water line kit, I did the same thing. I just searched T25 water line kit and there were a bunch of results. Just picked one and we're gonna hook it up. 
The first part of the kit adapts the CHRA threading into an AN line. You can see we've got one on each side there. Then there's a 90 degree elbow, so you can change the direction of the water line. And then there's the water line itself, which is gigantic. Apparently I didn't read very close when I was buying these things, but they're, they're big. We do it for the street cred, right? They look good, I suppose, but yeah, it's a tight fit. So it's gonna be a little challenging to get those on if you get this kit exactly, but it's gonna work. Look, <laughs> it looks like it has arms. I need to redraw his face. There we go, much better. And lastly, I installed some fittings that go from an AN into a barb, and we're gonna hook up the regular rubber water lines to that thing. So in a nutshell, what we're gonna do is we have a little line coming off of the thermostat housing here, rubber line, and it goes down there where you can't see somewhere to the front of the block. And one side of the hose is gonna go to one side of the turbo, and then the other side of the hose is gonna go to this side of the turbo. So to reiterate, you are gonna remove your stock line completely. And then one side of the CHRA is gonna go right into the thermostat housing. The other side of the CHRA is gonna go down there where that clamp is. Keep in mind that these are going to be very close to the accessory belts, so use zip ties or other means to make sure they stay very clear of the belts. So there it is, the turbo's connected, everything's hooked up, got the wastegate bracket modified. <sighs> what do you say we start this thing up and see if it breathes? I'm going to go ahead and hook my AFM back up so it can idle and stuff like that. So now that that's on there, I can finally get to intercooler piping part two, which is gonna finish off the plumbing and show a few essential connections and line routing, very important stuff. And that's about it for today. If you like the video, if you like the content, don't forget to subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Oh yeah, I forgot one more thing. You just installed a whole bunch of lines, made multiple connections, warm the car up and check for leaks. Very, very important. Don't just take it out and drive it and assume that you're not gonna leak. Very important stuff, check for leaks. All right. I will see you in the next one. Bolted to the turbine housing. Housing. So no matter how I rotate the comp Okay, can you stop cutting things for two seconds?